find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 261. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk tech, get geeky. With me on the couch is Katie Dudas. Hi. At K Dudders on the Twitter. I'm just, sorry, if you caught me making a face, I just happened to come across a uh, disrupt San Francisco, save $1,000 off your ticket now. There you go. So we, anybody want to save $1,000 on their disrupt San Francisco ticket, let me know. I'll point you in the right place. There you go. There you go. Just 1000 bucks. That means... <laughs> I don't even know what I don't even want to know what the what the full price is for that. <laughs> Holy crap! It's a whole different space. Uh, we actually just got off of uh, talking with uh, Cash Shake of Be Somebody, and uh, you can check out BeSomebody.co. And uh, this Thursday, uh, or depending on when you when you're re- listening to this, uh, we'll have an interview with him that'll be up. Fantastic interview about the new app Be, be Somebody, uh, as well as passions in general. And why the educational system is broken. It's, it's, it's a really fun. It was like a half an hour before we even t- talked about the app. Mm-hmm. Really good stuff. Highly recommend it. Uh, thanks, Katie, for uh, for helping me with that. Um, and also back on the line with us from Studio B is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters. Hey, how's it going on this fine Tuesday? Oh, so good, so good, so good to talk some tech. And of course, you can check us out awesomecast.net, um, awesomecast on the social medias, wherever you want to find us. You can subscribe to us on YouTube for video versions, Facebook also for video, well, well some video clips, and uh, the, the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, wherever you want to find us. And you can drop us a line at, at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com or on the social medias. Let us know anything you thought about stuff we talked about this week or anything you think we should be talking Talking about for the next week uh please hit us up on there uh so let's get into it oh, oh wait first 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 patreon.com slash awesome cast want to give a uh, quick shout outs to our uh, a few weeks now uh our pa- patron of thistle c business development up there in cranberry township thank you so much for contributing to the show we really really appreciate it well i haven't got any feedback what are you guys thinking i, I want to hear from you you're our boss we gave you a state of the awesome cast last week now i'm shaming our patron this is <laughs> this isn't a good practice but no seriously i want to hear from you and you guys too uh if you find a value in this show and you want to support it please go check out uh, patreon.com slash awesome cast so now let's get into our awesome things of the week uh first chill uh, what do you got you always got some you got a good new gadget for us this week so, so yeah, I found a, I found a little gadget while perusing the in- interwebs out there. As you um, do, it's called the Thing Charger. <laughs> and uh, for when you charge it, your thing with your doohickey, right? Yeah. So this is this is pretty. It's a pretty nice device. I, I mean, I have some critiquing on it, but mm-hmm. that being said, so it's a overlay charger for charging your things. Hence, the Thing Charger. Um, it has an interchangeable um, plug. And that will allow you to put pretty much any device on there. It'll do uh, hmm. lightning, uh, micro USB, uh, mini USB, and those charging, as you can see right there in the, the video, the back of it the, actually opens up and you can put those little plug converters um, in the back of the unit. It's pretty nice. Um, the other thing is, is on the bottom of the device, it has two USB charge ports, um, so you can plug two devices in obviously it also has the pass through for regular everyday three prong plugs um the one thing i would say about this is i love the i wish i wish it was four usbs all around because i don't know how many people are going to want to set their device on top of the the outlet Mm -hmm. depending on where it's located i i actually have a surge protector that's behind my couch with like six usb different cords coming out of it and the usb chargers um so this is something i I would actually love to have i just don't i'm not huge on the the devices sitting on top of this this would be great for the kitchen um, if you have outlets above your countertop um i think it's perfect for that it also you can also see in some of the video and some of the pictures they're actually putting tablets on top of this thing 
um, which I think is pretty impressive that they're they're kind of having it hold the weight. Um, you can kind of it, it seems that you can kind of stack them um, to to do multiple devices and multiple USBs. Um, so all in all, I'm pretty impressed with the, the the thing. And you can actually, I think, the more you buy, the more of a discount you get. I'm thinking about picking up a handful of them just for even around the house and and especially um, down in the basement on my workbench. Um, I could definitely see this this being a perfect perfect little little tool and they tell you they require for the kitchen the office the bedroom um give it as a gift um if you get if you buy a four pack uh, get buy three get one free um they come in at about forty dollars a piece if you buy five you get two free um obviously that's mm. the best value but I, i'm pretty like i said i'm pretty impressed with it with the little device here um and it's perfect for charging not just out of the two two ports it has but you can charge three additional devices off of it. So, uh, um, I don't know. Pick one up. Let me know what you think. I'll pick one up and I'll let you know what I think. I love, I love how it, it stores the little doodads, uh, the doodad doohickeys for the thingies, um, in the outlet itself too. Right. And, and uh, the other thing I like is, is their pass through is a one-to-one plug. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know if you've seen some of the other ones that all, that's like, a, um, it's like a, it, it covers your entire plug and it turns your the, the plug into like six plugs right as an overlay but it's actually only leveraging one plug so it seems kind of flimsy mm-hmm. it seems like it's really going to lock into place over top of of yeah. the existing outlet but if you so, but it has to be a pretty standard if you have anything funky going on with your outlets it's just not going to happen like right. i know i know in my house you know we have like kind of old outlets so that's not going to happen <laughs> yeah this requires the the dual three prong right standard newer which i mean if you have a house that's that's outlet. been updated in the last 20 years you're going to be fine yeah which i think is going to be the majority of people right so yep. so that at least, at least the people being interested in this so check is thingcharger.com if you want to check it out and they do have a USB C one mm-hmm. i don't know if, yeah so that i thought that was pretty cool too they're they're definitely up on the technology awesome Awesome. Go check it out. Let us know what you think if you if you pick one up. Katie, what do you got for us? I just have a picture. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I'll let you put the, the picture up. There it is. Um, I, I usually do not like memes, especially like relationship type memes on um, Facebook. But this one is it's Rihanna, and she said, "Ladies, if you think your man is cheating, uh, take him to the what's it say? Take him to the." Uh, take him to the lady's front door. The, <laughs> keep it the, clean. Wonder, the, the woman, the respectable woman's yes, front, front door. door. And see if his Wi-Fi connects. And I just thought this was just, it made me laugh so hard that we were officially in that kind of age technology-wise that um, connecting to the Wi-Fi is proof that you have been at this location before. And I was like, aha, it's techie. <laughs> I, it was funny because we were talking about this and mm-hmm. I said, well, they just did that on, I, I believe it was Silicon Valley. They mm-hmm. did that exact same thing because they were going somewhere to, oh, it was a rival or I, I think it was. Uh, so they, they went to some company and the one guy's Wi-Fi connected and they're like, why do you, what, when have you been here before? And, uh, and and it turned out like yeah I interviewed for a job when I thought we were going to go under a month ago or whatever the case was and so again that kind of betrayed like you've cheated on us you know kind of thing and and that is that is the case now isn't it mm-hmm. it's, so. it's, as long as the Wi-Fi isn't named like Linksys <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> then you could be anybody or Xfinity oh that would be amazing if like, you connected to somebody's Xfinity and your significant other's like look at you connecting and you're like I can connect to anybody's Xfinity exactly I was saying I was in the parking lot of the theater and I'm like AT- AT&T Wi-Fi one bar where, where is that there's not even like a plaza like regard close at all to us so um, but yeah it's it's a that, that's a really good catch right there but <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. Um, but but the, that's the age we're in, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so mine, and actually you had, the, this has been sitting in the half of the week for a few weeks now, <laughs> and we just never got to it, and you were gone, I wanted to wait for you to come back. Um, but uh, I, 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 you, I know you put this in here, and I know I've been kind of uh, uh, investigating this one a little bit. It's called Beam. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be be me because it's it's kind of a, an interesting thing. Uh, if you've listened to me talk about uh, Snapchat, Casey Neistat, I think I'm saying the name right. I never am too very sure. Uh, uh, Casey, he, he he released this app 
Uh, well, he's really big big on Snapchat. He's he's kind of a filmmaker, so he kind of knows what he's doing with cameras and that little storytelling kind of method, and in, in he's very creative with it, right? Uh, this is not him. This is some reviewer at TechCrunch, if you're on video. Uh, but he's showing off the, the, the video a little bit. So basically, the idea is you have this app, and it's very, it is very Snapchat-like, as in, like, you post it. I don't know if they go away. At, at all but you can't really do anything with them and once you watch them they're gone and basically the entire idea is like i said it's kind of you be me right uh you hold the phone up to yourself be it your forehead or your chest or something like that and you are the person basically the screen goes black until you're done and then the video just automatically uploads so don't play with this app in the bathroom ladies and gentlemen first of all and that's it. Like I'm, I've been playing with this a bit over the last week, like kind of more and more. And I have like six people have spent five minutes and twelve seconds as me. Keep in mind, this automatically does four seconds at a time. Period. Nothing else, right? And uh, so you go in here and and uh, you click on the thing, and I'll pull up our handy dandy feed that we're using for the last show. And if you go in here, if it updates, if it updates, if we update. If we update, um, but you go in here and it, it'll uh, pause for the audio, pause for the audio, and it won't come back. So that's great, too. Uh, but <laughs> you go in here and uh, you you uh, click on like I'm going to click on Casey's here and a video is playing and we can go to that now. Hold on. So a video is playing. And I can tap and, and react with a selfie. And now Casey, on the other end, is going to get a notification, and he's going to be able to see the selfies. Keep aiming. This is what it looks like. This is, this is now I'm watching you. Oh, geez. <laughs> so you're watching my, my thing from uh, before. Yes. So it, it's very, like, there's not much to it. Like, again, you can kind of uh, trick it. Basically, it's doing, using the light sensor on the front of your phone. This is iPhone only for the for the moment. I don't know if they'll be able to do this as easily on Android phones, because since that's a little non-standard with the light sensor, I think. I mean, I could be wrong with that. Um, but that's it. That's all there is to it. it. It is basically like that thing where, like, oh, I'm walking down downtown or something like that. Or, hey, I'm sitting here doing a podcast thing. Or I'm sitting at the coffee shop earlier. I'll just take the thing put it up against my chest i feel the buzz it's recording i look around do whatever maybe i'll do some more motions or something like that it buzzes again i'm done it's uploaded by the time i look at the thing and that's it and i don't know somebody might find that interesting uh but you know maybe i should plug it on other social medias uh but uh there you go <laughs> that's it that's all there is so, to so, it so, so maybe i missed two, two, two points of clarification you're limited to four seconds, correct? Yeah. And can, you were saying about linking to it on other social networks. So I don't just, I, it, it's not like oh, Snapchat where I can only get to it through the Snapchat. No, 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 it I, is. It is. I, I'm just saying I should tell other people to follow me. And actually, oh, okay. it's a very, it's kind of an oddly closed thing. Um I think I can generate new codes to add you to it, but but chill. If you download it right now, it's going to give you probably a weird like, yeah, you have like 99 days before we let you in or something until like okay. I give you a code or you find a code somewhere else. There's actually uh, Reddit's dedicated to finding codes. They'll put a code ever, out every once in a while on um on on the Beam Me app. Uh, I'm sorry, Beam app, Twitter, and uh, and I think like they were on. Uh, he was on. Casey was on. Uh, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's show, the Ask Gary V show, and he actually had a special link. This is interesting because there's links you can find, and I think maybe you can generate them too. Uh, I don't know. It's not really letting me do anything there. Let me see if I can do that. Unlock code. So I can go in here, generate an unlock code. And if you're joining me live, oh, and I can share it out. So here, I'll pull this up. So I can go in here, uh, do an unlock code, and I'll actually just go ahead and hit Twitter. And we'll share this out from Sorgatron. Uh, you're in. Here's your personal code to unlock Beam. Post. And somebody can click on that on Twitter, and they can follow me in. Uh, that's apparently what I did for Dutters. I think I text you the Beam mm -hmm. code, and, and you're in. And I think I'll probably automatically follow you um, and everything. So... Uh, but there's these links you can do, and I think that might be part of it, is you open that on your iPhone, it will download the app if it needs to, 
and then open it up and input that code and you're in. And that's it. So an in interesting way to do a kind of closed beta for now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many more features they would add to these, this thing. I don't know what the... I don't want to say what the point is, um, but uh, but what it really it is. It, it, I, I kind of joked beforehand. It's kind of like the most useless app ever, but it can't stop using it if you're into this kind of thing. And Dutters has one on here too. So so you did one. Just of here's a. It'll show up in a second. It's probably loading I, uh, since uh, Wi-Fi is a little wonky down here right now. Or it'll just keep Wee. loading. It'll keep loading. We'll keep loading. This would be an interesting one for debtors to do. Be me walking into a bunch of different porta johns. Yes, <gasps> I like the challenge. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, let's see how many people want to be my it, friend after that. Make it almost like the TARDIS. Like they're your, they're your. And it'd be interesting too if you could make them like a, a whole series where it's like you walking into one but walking out of another. Be... <laughs> <laughs> that, should, that, that would be a, a fun thing to do on Snapchat in general. So, yeah. so the trick is like if because I saw one where somebody had this was on top of a door and they opened the door and you saw the person walking in under the door. So they're doing something like putting something over the sensor, right? Yeah. In order to make it work. And or, or pointing they put it over a sink while they're like getting ready for the day or something like that or two. Like it was it's really interesting. And and again, kind of you know, like Snapchat's become this way like we're limited to do X, Y, and Z, but you have Taco Bell putting together these stories and everything, right? Mm -hmm. So um you know, what can you do with this? I don't know at, at this stage, or maybe there's something coming that I don't know. Uh, you know, kind of how do you monetize this? How does a company get in? How do I use this to put myself out there uh, if, I, if I am somebody that, that's creatively kind of spreading stuff out? And that's the only thing I can think of is the creatives doing something like this, you know, and just sharing experiences. We talked about the sharing passionary uh, with with uh, Cash on, on the Awesome Chat this week. This is just sharing experiences right it's, it's, it's beam it is I, I that's why i was confused at the beginning because i didn't hear them say it i'm like oh it's be me because you're holding it up and you're like i'm gonna be me you're gonna be me for the moment mm -hmm. right and you're gonna see what i see and experience what i experience and uh and it's really interesting and i got a reaction hopefully it loads i don't know what's going on here it's kick. just me going ah <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna kick this on here and see if we have a little more reaction but anyways um, but no, I think it's a really cool, it's really cool. It's something I experiment again, not like anything you desperately definitely need to get into like a Snapchat just to figure out what's going on these days. Um, but I think it is still a lot of fun and, uh, there's and, and actually here. I, so I got a reaction notification at the top and this is her <laughs> reacting. I'm like, Whoa, look at it's yeah. always weird because it, 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 cause I, I, I always have the finger cause I held it. That's, down. Yeah. That's right. That's the problem is where I hold it. Up here is where also it, right. it just like so so like I'm holding it over like your your thing here and it goes and then my fingers there and I want to move it because I'm and my fingers in the way but then I'm taking snapshots apparent or snapshots apparently as I go mm -hmm. and I don't know it just seems like that that little bit I, I feel like this is something that's going to end up like Snapchat did where they took off the leave the finger on the screen issue yeah. Um, so like they're probably just going to follow the lead, but it really is just like an Uber Snapchat, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, um, so check it out. Beam, uh, Beam app on the Twitters. Keep following that for unlock codes, or ask me, and I'll send you an unlock code. I'm pretty sure I can send unlimited unlock codes. So, uh, if you're into, it, if you want to try it out, if you're on iOS, I believe is iOS only for now. Uh, and check it out. That's it. All right. Um, so uh, what we have, hey, we got some remnants of some slice on Broadway here. There you go. Uh, Pittsburgh Pizza supporting perfect podcasting. No, podcasting pizza pepperoni. Order those words wherever it makes sense. Thank you to Slice on Broadway. Hey, Slice on Broadway actually helped us out this weekend. Uh, you know, we're, we were there. We're doing something called Chachi Plays for Kids. I still have pizza in my mouth. That's bad. Um <laughs> We did uh, Chachi Plays for Kids this weekend, and uh, we hit up Rico and said, hey, man, can you, uh, you know, hit us one up, up one of these meals so we don't have to worry about it, especially that morning it gets kind of rough, and they sent down two pizzas, hooked us up while we're uh, uh, watch, helping Chachi play video games for kids, for arts programs, some great stuff. Thank you so much, Slice on Broadway, and thank you for supporting the show by feeding our guests like Katie. Yum. There she is. I'm a big fan. Yes. They need to come up with a with a pizza that's a uh, the podcast pie 
the podcast <gasps> pie. Ooh, I like yeah, that. Yeah. I think that, that, would, that could be like the signature thing. Like okay. we could all phone in and be like, I need a, a large podcast pie. So what would you have on the podcast pie? I don't know. Like what is – That's, what that's for them. They, they got to come up with something very unique. There you go. Somebody it's tweet all us. of us geek. It has to have bacon. Yeah, it definitely has to have bacon. It definitely it has, has to have bacon. bacon. Um, and then they can go from there. Maybe the awesome cast pie. Maybe uh, when you guys tune in uh, here live at live.awesomecast.net on Tuesday nights, that's like, hey, it's time for my awesome cast pie. Bring it down. You know, hit that delivery. Be nicer about it, please. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> What's I demand up? all your pizzas. <laughs> What's up? It's pizza time. It's podcast time. Go check them out. Slice on Broadway. They're here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, as well as uh, in Carnegie, PA, <laughs> down on Main Street. Some great folks, some great pizza. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I'm saying a lot. We're blessed with a lot of great <laughs> pizza here in the Pittsburgh area. And uh, they are uh, definitely, uh, well, they're, 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 uh, they're renowned. Where they're awarded. What's that? I forgot to put my shirt on. You forgot to put your shirt on? Oh, we should break out the new ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we have the new VIP. Should we unveil them on the show? Ooh. I don't know. Is somebody going to get mad at that? I don't, I don't know. Um, so we, we might have a little something. I think on the live stream, you guys are going to get a little bit of a preview there. So thanks there. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. Check them out on the Twitters, the Facebooks, and the Instagrams. And let's take a quick peek what happened last week at Sogertron Media. It makes it, that. it makes it much harder to strategize which cards you use. Uh, another big change to Angry Birds 2 is now you have five lives and a timer until you get more lives, unless you pay. My my dad talked to Roddy and he's like, he he said that it was a uh, really great game to see like someone who my dad grew up watching a little bit of and how my dad was able to connect to me through pro wrestling. And Roddy was like, oh yeah, man, that he, he was like, that's really awesome. It's really great that we can bring like families together and he talked about his son who he was bringing up through wrestling and everything. We are back. Go check out that so much more. SorgatronMedia.com now with less professional wrestling if you're not into that. Uh, so uh, we, we'll explain at some point there. Uh, so you see something green is happening in the corner if you're on the video. And uh, a little sneak peek. A little, uh, uh, maybe you want to check out this uh, time code on your video version over at YouTube.com slash an awesome cast. But there it is. There's a sneak of your VIP t-shirts lying green. We'll know who you are. For Podcamp Pittsburgh X, go check it out. And if you haven't gotten yours, there are, I believe we have plenty left. I, I don't know how many VIPs. I honestly have no idea. Basically, if it's still up there, you can do a VIP. You should still be able to at PodcampPittsburgh.com. We will be there 2 p.m. on Sunday. I cannot tell you if we will live stream it necessarily. Well, if nothing else, somebody will periscope it. Somebody will periscope it. Somebody uh, at some point. I believe it'll, well, be, it'll, it'll be replayed next week, right? And it'll be replayed next week, of course. So if you missed it, but if you want to see it live, um, well, one, be there at PodCamp Pittsburgh if you're in the area. You better. Uh, we'll be in room C doing that. So please go check us out. So with that, um, let's. So, so <sighs> chill. I, I need to learn. <laughs> I feel like I should have like alphabet cereal or something for this segment. I'm I caught wind of this this afternoon. Still kind of put wrapping my head around it. But apparently Google is doing a restructuring of sorts. There's going to be Google. There's going to be something called Alphabet. You well, seem to you, Google's going to be like the child company. Okay. So Alphabet Google will be like a, a subsidiary. Of Alphabet, Alphabet's going to be the parent, massive, overarching company. So basically, it's not because we were used to Google being well. Google's of course a search, but Google is also the Project X, is this, that, and the other thing. But uh, they're going to restructure that. Google is just going to be the kind of smaller search e company. And now, thank you so much for providing these this wonderful chart. But why? so, and, but but to your point, so Google is going to be YouTube search. Right. The technical infrastructure, ads, maps, apps, and Android. Right. They Nest will be a sister company under the Alphabet name. Okay. Aside, Capital Fiber Ventures, Sidewalk Labs, X, and Calico. It's Calico. 
Calico is a project to increase human longevity. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> So, so I mean, still in the long run, Google is still funding most of this stuff, right? Um, like, that's where the cash cow is coming. Now, I understand from an article that I was reading on The Verge as why does this alphabet restructure make sense? Uh, basically, uh, when they went to investors, not investors, but uh, Wall Street, um, they talk about how great they're doing in search. But then they go do the cars and the project decks and all this stuff and the Google Glass and... Basically, it sounds like to the common person on Wall Street, they don't understand how this over here with the Project X's in, in cars is helping when all the money is being made over here on search and, and those attached companies like YouTube, Android, etc. Right? This is yeah. to kind of split that perception of the company. Well, I think it's per split the perception of the company, but I'm guessing somehow in here... It also helps them not look at so so if 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 Google has to take a hit for something they funded with Labs or X, there it's coming out of the Google name. Right now, Google doesn't have to fund Google X. Alphabet funds Google and Google X, which doesn't make it guess. which doesn't make it look as much of a loss to Google. That, that, who that's is my and I didn't even know there's Google Capital, which is their actual, or I'm sorry, Google Ventures. No, no Google Capital. Google Capital isn't actually an investment arm. Google Ventures is the search giant's venture capital investment vehicle. And for some weird reason, my phone is now giving me a bunch of answers for something for a sentence fragment. Well, it, it, so Google Capital is is a is late stage growth venture capital. So it's still, it's kind of a different version of of Google Ventures. It seems. Yeah. So uh, I mean, it's it's it, which makes sense. There's different levels to to uh, you know what our guests on Awesome Chat probably explain this better than we can. Uh, but anyways, uh, okay, interesting, interesting. Still, still kind of working around this, but um, okay. So 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 perceptively are we going to say oh that alphabet you know is do is up to the its old tricks again or we're we going to say google like is the company going to be referred to as google still you think i think we're going to still say google yeah it, just like you would so just would you well here's a question for you mm -hmm. if there was a new nest thermostat would you say the google thermostat or would you say the nest thermostat i would say the nest thermostat that's true that's true or the or the nest um camera mm -hmm. or whatever it, I would still look at Google. I would still look at Google in the same eyes I did today, and like the moonshots, I still would consider under Google X, which is where they're going to be. So, uh, and fiber. I, I, I don't think of fiber when I think search. I think of that as a different arm. They so, I, I think they're just. I mean, some of the some of them, like Google Capital and Google Ventures, are keeping the Google name in front of them. Right. But they're separate from the Sundar Pichai Google. And I think that's where the other piece comes in here is different different arms underneath the alphabet name have different CEOs. And that's one thing I, I know they're really famous for kind of having a small business on a startup mentality within this giant corporate structure. And the one, that one thing I was reading on that article says this will help them kind of be a little more direct with that small entrepreneurial attitude towards it mm -hmm. uh organizational wise too so very interesting interesting move and kind of uh, didn't see that one coming uh but hey okay i don't think it's going to affect us very much other than maybe we'll have google an alphabet company but also there's a wrinkle to this too that i think chilla you you brought up what's that oh the bmw thing Oh, yeah. So BMW actually owns the Alphabet name. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Are we going to have – what was um, – remember when Microsoft OneDrive used to be SkyDrive and then there was a big dispute over the Sky name, so SkyDrive became OneDrive? Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be interesting to see if we see Google, the Alphabet company, now the whatever other company. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll see how that kind of plays out over time. But yeah, that was one thing that was brought up today is, is BMW actually owns 
owns that name. Wow. Wow. Anyways, uh, we'll, we'll see kind of how that goes. Um, so let me bring this around. Hey, you know what? I should have used this as my awesome thing of the week. But if you go over to ChachiPlays.com or our Facebook page for Chachi Plays or anything like that. So I was expecting to get up on Sunday and I was like, I'm going to start editing something. And I was shooting stuff in a certain way so that I could uh, have a nice highlight video of the 24 hours right not just the time lapse like i wanted a nice like this is the stuff that happened because you know like 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 katie brought some people down that were uh twirling and 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 hula hooping and and entertaining and we had we had so we had, it was more than just chachi sitting there for 24 hours like stuff happened around him and it was it was fun and i wanted to convey that little did i know Google Photos did all my work for me the next day uh, <laughs> as I woke up to a little notification and found this fantastic video that just captured everything perf perfectly, just uh, just about perfectly. Uh, I, I And I'm in the app on my iPhone, and you can go in, and I changed the music. I, I took out, because it had me talking a couple of times for no reason at all, back-to-back, uh, -back, and it was a little awkward, so I, I replaced those with something else. And... Uh, and there you go. There's a minute and 15 seconds recapping in pictures and video in a very creative and fun way. Chachi plays for kids. And that's one task I didn't have to do. And I don't know if I would have went to the trouble, all the filters and the transitions and the craziness. I wouldn't have caught that thing of Chachi flashing by the camera, uh, for instance. It did, a, it did a pretty incredible job. So now um, I'm out of a job. Because nobody's going to need a damn editor anymore for events like this. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. Have you guys? Uh, how much have you guys been playing with Google F Photos? First of all, have, have you seen some of this well, awesome? I've used, I've used this feature quite often, and I, I've I've added them back to my library and the, the animations and the mm -hmm. collages and everything like that. The question I have is: Is how did you go back in and edit it? I didn't see that an was, easy way to do that. That was in it the sounds like that was in the phone. So I brought it up, happened to have brought it up in the phone, and I don't know, I clicked something in there that said edit, and uh, it brought up like this in, this editing, this video editing interface. And it let you, it let you change the music and right. grab back in other pieces. Okay, very cool. I'm going to have to, next time it auto creates one of these, I'm definitely going to go back in there. I have one for Christopher's birthday that it auto created. And I have some other some other ones that are created, so well, I'm definitely it, interested in this. Well, it's feature. like it did one for the gathering of the juggalos, but it was this weird folksy music, and I'm like, well, here's this weird video that looks awesome. Don't know about the music, but turns out I could probably have gone in there and done something about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me see if I'm, I'm in the app and I'm on the web version right now, and uh, I don't know. Do you play much with stories where there's kind of that visual like pictures are on this moving parallel thing? And yeah, so, so I've used that too a lot. I use them more on like you're, if you're taking pictures when going on vacation and you start them from the moment you leave the house to the moment you get back to the house. Mm -hmm. um, those I've actually, it took, it took pictures from years ago when I first started uploading my, my pictures in there and, and assembled, assembled the stories, which I really like those too. Um, in fact, some of them I've gone back in and, and actually typed in descriptions and it's, it's almost like a little photo album, like a little photo album flip book. And it'll actually, if you, if you do it while you're traveling and you take pictures along your travel route, so you're driving from like here to Philly, it'll actually make, it'll put them on the map and it'll make the little dots between the points, mm -hmm. like, like an cool. Indiana Jones type, type thing. Trying to see if I can find one. I, I think I have one here, but it's a little funky. So, like last year, oh, I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong page. All right, this will be a little delayed here. Um, no, this isn't right. This is an album. <laughs> I don't even know which one it is. Oh, here we go. So you go to the Gathering of the Juggalos. It's a little bit delayed. Um, and it loads, it loads, it loads, it loads. Oh, these are going to be some fantastic pictures, by the way. So you go in, and well, there's a random picture from like the podcast the day before, mm -hmm. and it goes day by day. And it tells you kind of where you're at, and uh, as you go through here, and it'll stop, and there's your little dot dot dot. It'll come up in a moment because I forgot I'm on a delay over here. Do do do, and uh, you go, and even like videos are in this and everything, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. 
Um, although mine glitched and thought I went back to Wheeling in the middle of this and then back to the middle of almost Columbus for the rest <laughs> of this. So it, it gets a little weird. And, and that's what I've noticed because I think that's when you get in there and, uh, of course, it's uploading everything off of your phone. And I've maybe gone in and taken a video, did something in Instagram while I'm like at the hotel that I did at one of these other locations. Now it doesn't. Now it puts that new timestamp on that update I did to it. So it's kind of like like everything else. If you just use this, it's going to be great. If you use this and you use like Instagram and you use something like iMovie and you made a little thing, it's going to get weird. OK, um, it, it doesn't get too weird if you take like like you're talking about Instagram. If you take your Instagram and allow it to save the Instagram pictures back to your camera roll, yeah, and then sync your camera roll, it's not bad. Well, I'm not saying um, like 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 uh, I I didn't like Instagram right away after I took a picture. I was sitting there okay. the next morning going through, oh, did I get any good shots last night that maybe I want to share? And and because, I mean, in this case, I'm, I'm doing stuff like until about four in the morning. And I'm like, I'm not I'm trying not to share all night, all night, all night. So people don't see anything. I wait until I wake up the next day and around like, you know, over lunchtime, I'm just going through some of my pictures from the night before on my phone and, and maybe sharing a few. Right. Uh, that, that seemed to make sense. Those get dropped in with the new timestamp because they think it's the next day. And that screws up when you start doing these auto stories and stuff. I mean, it's a yeah, it's a nuisance that you can deal with. You yeah. can always delete these out or whatever. Right. Um, but but it's an interesting nuisance. And then I, I, I share them with like Facebook and I share them with Twitter. But it's so awkward because it's not built in or anything. But. Anyways, I, I but anyways, going off into Google Photos. I was this is actually supposed to be parlaying us. I don't know what the why do you want dog? The dog was on the last show. Anyways, I don't know what's happening out there. Um, but anyways, no, this was a, a fun one that kind of went along with this because I wonder if this is going to be along the same lines, but probably without the muscle that Google has. Um, behind behind photos, you know, behind our machines and everything like that. Uh, so according to Wired, uh, this self-editing action camera uh, is the future of home video. So they, we're thinking like they're showing a camera that's uh, mounted to the side of a helmet. And, uh, and I guess this is going to take video and actually, again, self-edit kind of the, the best parts of it and kind of have something for you. So, I, I, I wish there was a way where some of these would allow you to pick your highlight reel, right? Uh, where, where so this is going to be do, doing one of those things where it's going to try to guess and what and whatnot. There may be some of those frames that you definitely want in there that it decides to drop. Um, I think where where they need to they need to kind of post the entire video or keep something around the entire video, but then let you try to try to let it set an automatic um, highlight reel, but then allow you to go back in and force pieces you may want to keep in there. Right. There has to be kind of a post editing that, you know, okay, the machine's only going to do so much so well. Oh, sorry. Pizza shot. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but no, yeah, the, it's only going to do so much so well, but there's a certain point where, where a human needs to take the selection. But a lot of times if you talk about like shot composition, it can figure that out. Like this is the thing oh. where something happened. Right. And that, that's how it knew Chachi walked across in front of the camera in front of Frank doing the accordion, right? They're like, well, this shot is a lot like the one that you saw before, except this thing happened. I bet that's it. that's something worthwhile, right? It's making mm -hmm. those decisions. And and if this thing that I, it's called Grava, G-R-A-A-V-A, -A -A, getgrava.com if you want to check it out, uh, this thing claims to do the same thing. Now, I'm wondering how much of it is, is it just doing it all in camera? Is it doing it in software afterwards? I think it's mostly doing it in camera. You can add great music to your video via an app that you can connect to it. Uh, so that's fun. So, But, but that idea, that's... That's really interesting to me, you know. Uh, and again, isn't this an interesting spot? We've seen this before, haven't we, Chilla? That part where web design and web development has really been um, kind of the purpose has been defeated because a lot of us can just fire up a Squarespace.com and do everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, I'm seeing it in video editing because most people that just need to get a thing done, and and I I don't I'm on. You know, I'm looking at 
Craigslist every once in a while. I'm looking at Guru.com, and I see I've seen exactly this. I have a bunch of GoPro stuff that I want edited nicely. Well, if you use this instead, you didn't need to go on Guru and ask for an editor because you probably had mostly what you needed already done for you, uh, depending on how well this works. But uh, maybe this is early. Maybe this is uh, at least or maybe just upload everything to Google Photos and it takes care of you. Right. Um, but it does feel like that's kind of that next step, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm trying to now I'm trying to find this device that maybe I just saw it in a dream. But they have something that's like a little bit bigger than a, a set of a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a portable video or portable studio that you can put in your pocket. And it uses your, it uses your phone and something else that can do some 4k work, but it, but it kind of lets you take your, take a phone or a small portable device and turns it into that studio editing suite, knowing that you don't have that kind of capability on most phones to the processing power behind it. The processing power is actually like in this small portable unit. And now I can't find a link. Um, I don't know, but to your, to your point, I, I do see this is where kind of the future is going mm -hmm. and, and allowing people to just quickly create their own content and get it up in a quick manner is, is what's going to allow them to be, beat things like major news studios and whatnot. Right. right. I, mean, I mean, we're already there with people getting hands on with things. I was uh, on a shoot with uh, John Chamberlain at Jagoff.com last week. And he, and he was telling me about how, you know, like it's amazing how much time I spend in iMovie, you know, take it little videos and he knows to take those little bits and throw up, you know, a 30 second video just in his Twitter feed, just to help if we can't get a video out before an event, say, you know, we did a lot of that with Chachi Plays. But he'll take that video, and he's sitting there, and he's clipping the thing. We were, It was clipping over a over a Permani sandwich the other day, right? And mm -hmm. and and he's, and he, you know, he's the one that, he's been on the show before, and you, you know, he's been on, and he says, I'm the technical, you know, I'm, I'm the technical goof-off around here. I, I don't know half of this stuff, you know, but, but he's sitting there doing it just like anybody else, you know? When we go on our Power Hour, when we go on these shows, you know, we go on our, our, our rants about how you guys can make anything at Pod Camp Pittsburgh. Um, like when it comes to media, when it comes to creative things, literally you can make anything. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that barrier is so much lower. Yeah, you got to be able to afford an iPhone, but there's free iPhones, you know. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, and then there's other things than iPhone. You know, and there's mm -hmm. these things. These cameras are $250. If you're getting a half decent consumer camera, if you're looking at a GoPro and it's shipping in February, um, why not consider something like this? That'll do half the work for you, you know, instead of hiring somebody like me to do that for you. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's very, very interesting. I, I'm going to keep an eye on this and uh, I really hope maybe maybe it's something to be worthwhile to keep our hand. Maybe this is the thing that I put on the post during a wrestling match and then I just have a highlight reel afterwards. Wouldn't that be interesting? That's a really good well, idea. I'm sorry, Katie. Are you thinking of the NAR box? G N A R box? I, I don't know. Okay. Let me look. NAR -A box. That looks interesting. Yes, that is exactly what I was. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, I'm yes. interrupting. NAR that's, box. No, no, no. That's it, though. <laughs> Pizza power. That, that is it. And I'm. So, I, I was actually trying to find this earlier, and I'm surprised you didn't pick it as potentially your pick of the week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't come across it. Uh huh. So what? So what is the NAR box? So it, it's a mobile solution for viewing, backing up, editing, and sharing HD footage from any GoPro Hero or DSLR camera. Okay. And it, it takes it takes the processing off your phone and offloads it onto this little box that you can carry with you anywhere. It also allows you to back up um, the data. But um, then you use an app on your phone to then edit that data. Okay. Um, so it's, it, it's a pretty interesting concept for not having all of the, the hardware and potentially a phone to, the, to offload a lot of that processing back to this little box. Or even just killing your battery. Yeah. So this is, so, so basically, wow. Okay. So, but you're still editing. Like, is it using iMovie or is it using its own editor? It's using its own editor. Okay. Okay, hope it the looks pretty darn streamlined. Hope the editor's like it's, good. It, it's it's it, it to me it looks like I, like an to me it looks like a step up from iMovie. 
Okay. Like they really took they I feel like iMovie had to take elements from iMovie on the laptop or desktop and kind of transpose them to mobile. They, they obviously started kind of fresh with this. Right. So I feel like they were they were able to really just start from scratch and not have to worry about bringing a community that already used a product over. So is it's connecting directly to the Narbox as they're showing in this uh, in this uh, uh, thing here and it just shares it right off into you get your share button for Instagram and, and everything there. Wow. Well, it's a waterproof housing if you're worried about that. Yeah. Of course, the video, you know, we're talking about a GoPro, so it needs to pair with that. So you need to have it on your person while you're, you know, river rafting or whatever cool thing you get the GoPro. That's why I don't have a GoPro. I don't do enough cool stuff. We need to do cool things out Maybe that's it. Maybe, like, if I got a GoPro, that's what would make me go go canoeing or something, right? Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, it, it does. This looks really interesting, and uh, I could see some very interesting kind of uses for it. Um, but again, it's, I mean, when you look at the specs on it, I mean, it's, there, it's a quad core 2.2 gigahertz CPU Jeez. with an eight, with an eight core 3d GPU, four gig of Ram built in 128 gig flash storage, um, USB three, two USB three ports, SD card, micro SD card, and, and six to eight hours of continuous battery life. So they they wedged wedged a lot of technology into to this little for a hundred and fifty bucks. Am I seeing that right? Is the standard? It's going to be two fifty, uh, but if you order it, okay. With Kickstarter. Of course, they had lower ones yeah. for uh, as low as ninety nine dollars. It looks like uh, one hundred thirty dollars. So wow, that looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, they sold out a lot of those, but of course, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty impressive little device. Looking the um, uh, estimated to deliver in March of 2016. I would, the other thing we were just looking at was in February. So uh, no, this looks like this looks very interesting actually, um, and I'm, I'm amazed I didn't I didn't come across it. That's that's awesome. Lowest uh, thing is oh you got a sticker pack for 20 bucks. There you go. Awesome. The Narbox. Go check out Kickstarter. It is three, three days, days to go. go. 430 thousand of its 100 thousand dollar goal. There you go. Awesome. I mean, just it's one of those like that is perfect. I don't know what I would use it for. You know, same with the Gra Grava. You know, I mean the Grava is like easy. It's like well, you know, what would I use a GoPro for? Again, I don't do anything interesting enough. You know, what? I'm just gonna use a GoPro for uh, doing Let's Play videos. Those get pretty serious, especially with the Wii Sports, right? So. All right, Sheila, uh, tell me about the, you can hack a car via text and OBD. Now, I, I read the article about the Jeep that they shut down remotely, uh, supposedly without any access to it. What is happening here? So this, this you actually have to use the o, OBD port mm -hmm. or two port. Um, and they said they found the, the vulnerability with a standard, um, with one of the devices that you can find pretty much anywhere. So it sounds like they were using like, what do you use? Auto automatic oh, automatic. Yeah. Automatic. Um, it sounds like they were using one of those, um, but they were actually able to then send commands via text message. And then it, they were applying the brakes. They were turning on the windshield wipers, um, all, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it said, uh, you'll be glad to hear that mobile devices has already patched its hardware in response to these findings mm -hmm. and that the phone numbers for these dongles aren't normally public. Um, that being said, I'm sure how many people are taking their OBD port and, and device and, and patching it continually? I, I, don't, I don't know how many, um, I don't know for your automatic if it, if it, if it does software patches and how you get those software patches. Um, but things like this where someone may not patch them all the time make me a little nervous. And it seems like this is something that then people can use to cut your brakes or, or do other mean malicious things without even necessarily knowing who they're doing it to. That is a bit of a hole, I guess, you know, and, and I guess I kind of get a, uh... Like we talk about, like the systems themselves and whether they're fire firewalled between the driving system and the entertainment system, but that is another opening because like you got to think. I am I even my my old Buick 
right? I have automatic mm-hmm. in there. It's connecting to the car through that port, and I don't know if it goes both ways. So I guess it does because you can turn off a light free of the app. And I don't know right. how much damage you can do on an older car like that. There is a control system, but it is Bluetoothing to my phone. So now you need to ba- just hack my phone in order to get to that. Well, and especially since they're insurance companies are handing these devices out, right? Yeah. To then phone back and get you a deal on your insurance mm-hmm. based on your good driving. Um, that's where I get I get nervous. And, I mean, we even – we take extra precaution around our houses is, is we use Nest products and we use Wemo products and things like that. I don't want someone remotely turning on and off my lights. I don't want someone remotely peering in on, on my video. Um so, so th- this is something that I'm definitely interested in. And I also look for, when I'm looking at companies that, that do this type of stuff, I actually go back and how many times a year do they up- update their app? How many times a year do they update their firmware? Um, publicly, I mean, obviously, do they have change logs? And are, are there change logs? If your change log is bug fixes and, and performance enhancements, I'm like, I want to know what you actually did what what bug did you fix and where did you make enhancements how so are how be, are I you pre- skeptical on on things like this how exactly like, are you protecting my car right because i drive it at 70 miles per hour sometimes <laughs> that's yeah. kind of important to me i i don't want you to cut my brakes <laughs> right, right exactly exactly Wow. Just like I don't want you to shut off all the power to my house. This is, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is, I mean, this is the, this is the thing that's going to come to a head for, for security, I think, right? Is, right. and this has been the conversation and I hope it doesn't scare people from automa- from, 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 uh, driverless cars, but it's going to scare people just from technology and cars, I feel. Right. Right. And, and these, these were the dongles that are cellular capable. Yeah. So they're, so they're probably not the, the automatic brand. But, but still, um, but still that that is a possibility. You know, you know how it is. Like the mm-hmm. non technophiles are like, well, I'm not going to put anything in that because, you know, if that one's bad, then what's wrong with all these other ones? Which actually is kind of a legitimate concern. Right. Because I'm now thinking about that. Oh, crap. I had no. There was no wireless connection to that my car. Now there is, mm-hmm. and that, that well, wasn't there before. Something else showed at DefCon where you could you kind of it was a little chip and radio antenna that would sniff um, the garage door mm-hmm. openers and yeah, car keyless entry for cars. Um, and pretty much what it would do is anything it would listen for any signal that it could pick up. And it would it would intercept it, and the person would just think right. Well, the, you go up to your car and you hit the button, and your your door doesn't unlock, um, and you just hit it again, right? Well, what you didn't, what you don't know is the first time you hit that, someone intercepted the signal, and now they have the ability to unlock your car. Um, so, so I think it's just something we need to take into consideration. I'm not trying to cause mass hysteria or fear. Um, I'm just right. saying. Right. We don't want to. We don't want to yell fire on this podcast. Right. Have an, have a have at least a small understanding of what you're plugging into your car or how you're impacting your home or personal life by by turning all this by purchasing these types of devices or or especially I see a lot of people say, well, I got this one because it was cheaper. Um, well, it was probably cheaper for a reason. Something. Uh, there's, there's, this is this is going to be a huge thing over the next few years since just getting started. I think we're we're going to see uh, mass recalls. I think by every major manufacturer in some fashion. Um, or will they just shut down consumer access to the o- OBD port? Ooh, ooh, I don't like that. Well, they, I mean, they they can do some kind of special encryption I, where uh, okay, only, okay, you you have to. Where automatic would have to register their device and get a key. But still, and, and that kind the of thing. bigger problem, even beyond that, the bigger problem is that Bluetooth hole. Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. that's I. This is kind of a diversion from that. Like the fact that you have unencrypted Bluetooth going from like your wheels to your system. Ugh. And I mean, there, have we not learned? I mean, that's that's the way into 
anybody's electronics. That was, you know, that was in T-Mobile's problem when ever, when the celebrities got hacked. It was all because they left their Bluetooth on. And it, it's, it's a well-known fact for how long that Bluetooth is so weak and unprotected. You know, it's right. like, it's just... Right. What isn't it? It's the security is the problem that any IT has. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, how much does it does it cost us to fix this problem that may not be a problem that nobody ever finds out, or we don't know is a problem yet because we didn't put enough money into it, versus, well, what does it cost to fix it when the problem finally happens? It's a gamble, and that's what they do, and that's what these car manufacturers are doing um, with something that can cause a lot of damage in our in, in in our lives if you think about it i mean they're the, just with the the lawsuits in the last how many years recently um with car manufacturers even in the airbag situations mm -hmm. or toy, toyota with their um floor mats and how long something has to go on until action is taken for this to be remedied right so it's probably going to be the same exact situation, and I'm sure people were saying things about this before. You know, these other things happened with these car manufacturers. People have been talking about these for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. The Internet of Things, because now everybody has a way into uh, your house, your nest. I obviously, you know, use it because it's secure. But, but I mean, that type of device. You know, mm -hmm. we're we're creating this connectivity, and the manufacturers aren't doing a due diligence to make sure we're secure in in, in these new ways. So. It's exciting and dangerous at the same time. I mean, as with anything, right? So mm -hmm. we, we, we create new, new awesome things, and and we create new vulnerabilities as well. Just mm -hmm. how technology goes. So, all right, uh, Katie, did I miss? Did you did you have anything additional in here? No, I had no. Nothing. You're slacking this week. You're oh, good. I'm totally uh, slacking. Yeah, yeah. You're too busy making notes for the uh, other that other interview we did. Yeah. So and eating pizza. And eating <laughs> I don't know pizza. Well, hey, pod camps this weekend. You guys will all be there. <laughs> yeah. In some fashion, right? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll we, definitely be there on Sunday. Right, right. Ooh, Kenny, will you be there on Sunday for the live? I yeah. don't know. Nobody invited me, so I don't know if I'll be there. <laughs> Katie, I don't think you understand who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, Katie, would you like to come to the Awesome Cast Live on Sunday? Yes, please. <laughs> 2 p.m. Room C at Pod Camp Pittsburgh at Pod, Point Park University's uh, University Hall. Yes, please. I think I Are you going to wear a shirt? Um, Maybe. <laughs> If I say no, we get more pants. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, no pants, no shirt. So Woo! we'll be there. I will also, I believe I am doing introduction to video podcasting this year. We're just doing one of them. Uh, I will also be on a panel. I should look up this panel that I'm uh, supposedly on. Uh, it, it's actually going to be exciting. So we haven't done this for a few years. Um, we used to do like grassroots podcasting. We used to do a We're Still Here. I think we did at 7 and we're still here at 10. Um, and, uh, it, and, and, and it's a time to get together. I'll be on it. Doug from Should I Drink That? Somebody named John Carmen that used to do something called the G-Spot <laughs> is, is going to be a part of it, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, so I'm sure he'll have an interesting perspective. This is not what? Oh, here it is. It is called OG Podcasters Panel with Justin Kanaki. <laughs> We are the OGs, apparently. Justin, of course, uh, we talked to him a couple weeks ago on the Awesome Chat. Uh, he is a co-founder of PodCamp Pittsburgh, and uh, also he's doing something else that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I'll I'll link it. I'll link it somewhere along the way. Uh, we talk about, go to the Awesome Chat with Justin Kanaki. <laughs> Or justinkanaki.com, <laughs> and you'll find out what that thing is that I can't remember that he's doing that I'm sure is amazing. Um, but uh, let me talk about experts. This is an expert that's been uh, on his own doing uh, freelancing for uh, well over 10 years and a uh, really cool guy. And I'm sure he's going to press us for how the heck, why the heck are you guys still doing podcasting over after all these years? And why is John Carmen the smart one to have quit? Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, takeaways from this uh, podcasting then podcasting now podcasting future i think we'll podcast on hoverboards myself uh so let, uh, let's check all that stuff a, a bunch of just just tremendous people tremendous panels we'll be filming streaming uh i think we're going to get some special help on some of the streaming here this year uh i want to we'll we'll do we'll be plugging all that kind of stuff chris brogan one of the co-founders of PodCamp itself not PodCamp pittsburgh pod camp period in boston and he's also doing a lot of great things i don't even know i can't even keep up with him these days he's another one of those guys that are just he's got books and he's got podcasts and he's got this thing and and uh and, and, and stuff uh so uh chrisbrogan.com i think is where you start and find out who he is so 
uh, PodCamp Pittsburgh. Like, hey, Chilla, anything you're looking forward to at PodCamp? Awesome cast. <laughs> <laughs> the entire reason i'm going oh there you go there you go how about you katie you've been looking at the sessions i'm going to the pod <laughs> awesome cast <one> now. <laughs> good answer I am. good answer I am all about you that. guys get an extra pizza next week hey all i have right. a question for yes, you are yes. you still looking for volunteers for podcast oh uh, we are always looking for volunteers for pod camp hey, if listeners. you'd like to be a part of it also vip is still available mm-hmm. and then you get this fancy shirt that katie has uh, i'm not wearing a shirt Oh, uh, wearing a shirt, wearing a shirt. There it is, and you also get this fancy swag bag behind my head. <laughs> there it is. Maybe remind me to take that down after this week, uh, so we can actually give it to somebody. So go check that out. Uh, uh, VIPs, I think it's twenty five dollars for VIPs. Uh, that money goes into Pod Camp. We don't have a lot of sponsors or anything this year. Uh, basically, the money from VIPs, and and, uh, and there are a couple of people supporting us. Uh, Lipson being one of them. Uh, that we talked to Chris O'Connor a little bit back for on evening up with pod camp uh so so you're actually helping pod camp directly at this point uh so podcamppittsburgh.com we appreciate anybody to check that out um you know what there's nothing else worthwhile coming up mm-hmm. i don't think in pittsburgh <laughs> in the technology side wrestling things yes go listen to indie mayhem show to find out what those are but um that's all i got that's all I have. Awesomecast.net. <laughs> Live.awesomecast.net. We join you here about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time uh, every Tuesday. And uh, we're usually getting ready by then. Or, uh, surprise, we did an interview this week. And maybe you want to jump in a little bit earlier or keep an eye on the Twitters for that. Um, you can also follow us on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, the Facebook group, and Google+. Plus. Follow us on all the podcasty places. Um, all those are linked over at awesomecast.net. Thank you to our awesome chat room that joined us here, including you, Wheels. Hi. And uh, thank you, Chilla, at Chilla on the Twitters. Thank you very much, Josh Chilla on the Facebooks. At K Dutters on the Twitters. Yep, all over worldwide. There you go. Dutters worldwide. All over worldwide. worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> Worldwide. Turn up my headset. <laughs> and I'm at Sorgatron. And uh, check out everything at SorgatronMedia.com. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.